Razer, the world's number one gaming laptop company, eight years ago, just released their brand new Blade 18 that they're so confident in, they didn't even send us one. Uh, thank you, Dbrand, for sending us this. <laughs> Let's see how this is. I actually have pretty high hopes. I took a look at some of their stuff at CES and it was pretty good. But how is it when we're in our office? Dang. So the charger for this guy is a 330 watt gallium nitride power adapter. And this thing is dense. Normally 330 watts is more like the package it came in than the actual charger. <laughs> oh. Why did I forget that that's what was in there? Oh my God, it's beautiful. <laughs> so this is Warzone Damascus, which looks pretty ridiculous on a Razer Blade 18. Oh my God, holy shit. One second. This thing must be the better part of seven pounds. <laughs> 6.9 pounds, nice. With the charger, you're going to be carrying around 9.1 pounds in your backpack. There is a reason they call this a desktop replacement, not a laptop. <laughs> okay, what else do we have in here? Go green with razor, cool. Aha, there we go, that's what I wanted to see. There's already stickers on it, but you know the rules, Jake. They include stickers, they go on. So first thing that you notice about this when you pick it up is, wow, that is heavy. Followed by, wow, that is a lot thicker than I thought. You look at it in the photos and you kind of think of it as just like, you know, a normal laptop size. Cause like proportionally, this is like a normal laptop, except that IRL, it's actually like 30% larger in every single way. Like, can you see the difference in thickness? Yep, it's nearly twice as thick. But with great girth comes great IO. So here we have headphone microphone combo jack, Thunderbolt 4, two USB type A's, and two and a half gig LAN around the other side. Full-size SD card reader, love to see that. Excellent when you just wanna slap an SD card reader in there and light room away. Another Thunderbolt 4, another USB type A, and HDMI 2.1, 2.1, hell yeah. I do want to note that this HDMI and this Thunderbolt both connect directly to the GPU. So you can be outputting from the GPU to your monitor or whatever, and you don't have to worry about the integrated graphics getting in the way. Okay, one finger, not quite. <laughs> this is massive. Yeah, zoom out, Andy, thanks. I don't know how to give you guys a good idea of just how big this laptop is. Like, I can continue showing you a thin and light beside it, but like, in person, this is comical. Bring over your MacBook 16. Like, this right here is a 13 and a half inch laptop. It's not particularly large. Yeah, MacBook 16, very large laptop in many situations. <laughs> This thing is huge. While we have the MacBook here, let's just have a little bit of a feel, you know? Remind ourselves just how well built these things are. And, oh, 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 oh. The Razer is probably stiffer, except for in the one spot where it counts on the keyboard. It flexes a little bit here. Only spot that matters for chassis rigidity. Whereas the MacBook, you can get a little bit of flex if you really push on it. But in the keyboard, it is pretty nice and firm. Razer's done a really good job with their build quality for a long time. Reliability, not so much, build quality very high. And this right here is just a fine example of how to make a really stiff laptop. And it's also a fine example of how to make a matte black coating that really shows fingerprints, it seems. <laughs> that is gross. While we're here, we're going to give you the specs of the computer because they left them on. So we have a GeForce RTX 4090. Apparently this is the only one in Canada. Don't know how Dbrand got it, but that doesn't matter. Also a 13th gen i9 13950HX, 24 cores up to 5.5 gigahertz. Real fast boy. And with any luck, the vapor chamber in here will allow us to use all of that. We also apparently have a quad HD 240 hertz display as told to us right here. Goodbye sticker. At least these stickers come off easy. There's nothing worse than when it's like, oh, this laptop, it has all of these features and it's forever going to be right here. All right, I think we're about good to turn it on. But before that, I'm going to turn you on with this sticker on the back of the laptop. Thanks to Dbrand for sponsoring this video. Their skins are made from high quality 3M vinyl. The patented adhesive is guaranteed to leave no residue on your device if you want to change the skin. This Warzone Damascus skin is available as a skin on select devices or even a Rubik's Cube. It's also on Linus's tie can, but frankly, it looks way better on a laptop than it does on a tie can. Go to shortlinus.com to buy your overpriced stickers today. And for whatever reason, there's a bunch of billboards around of Linus. 
Thanks, D Brand. <laughs> D Brand, Rap Andy's van. Oh my god, don't please. We just opened this up and it is nearly full battery life, but at the same time, we want it to last till the end of the shoot, so we're gonna plug it in. Not actually, this thing has about four hours of battery life, which is pretty terrible, but also long enough to complete this video. Now this is a pretty cool feature that they have here. So you can plug in this charger any way, but if you plug it in this way, it blocks your ports on this side. So you can plug it in one way. <laughs> now one thing that you might've noticed is that despite being dwarfed by this chassis, the keyboard does not feature a numpad or particularly annoyingly, full-sized arrow keys. So a lot of people might want to, you know, have actual arrow keys for playing games. I have used this style of key before to get very high level at Tetris battles, so it doesn't necessarily hold you back, but at the same time, having full-size keys would be a lot better. For the trackpad, it is absolutely massive, even though on this chassis, it doesn't look particularly big. It's what, 50% larger than the 17 from last year? It is a very large trackpad. It is so large, that it might be a problem, but as far as I can tell, the palm rejection is pretty good so far. Let's see if we can... Okay, this, this is pretty good. I'm moving my hands around as much as I can on this with the palms, and the mouse is just not going anywhere. But then the second that I bring out like a finger or a thumb or something, moves right around. So their palm rejection seems like it is very, very good. Not quite as good though is the keyboard. Now this keyboard is a step up for Razer. I was able to use it side by side with the current gen like Blade 14s at CES. This is a lot better, but it still is pretty sh if we're honest. I don't even really know why it's bad. A lot of like empirical ways, I think it's mostly fine. It's just like the feel of the keys is off. I think what I don't like is that there's like a lot of mushy not really travel before the actual actuation. So if you look on the HP right here, when I click a key, it's not moving at all. Then I get over the force of actuation and it goes straight to the bottom. Whereas on the razor blade, if you look, there's probably what, like a millimeter, 1.2 millimeters of travel on this, but you're able to get about half a millimeter or so of travel before it actually actuates. And that makes it really hard to kind of really tell like, oh snap, we got it. Instead it's more like, eh? I'd say this is a B. Maybe a B plus if I'm being charitable. Just get better switches. Anyway, what is good about the keyboard though is the RGB. Razer is famous for having very well done RGB and there is no exception here. And if we look, they have 15 different brightness levels on the keyboard, which goes from really quite bright down to nothing. I do have to give it to them. This screen is impressive. It is just pure chonk wise. Like if you're looking for a desktop replacement, this is kind of immersive in the way that a desktop is. Like I could see myself having multiple windows open at the same time for doing work. It is 2560 by 1600 P. So that's 16 by 10. You get that little bit extra on the bottom. Love to see it. If you want 4K, you need to step down to the Razer Blade 16, so that has a mini LED 4K display. But if you are a gamer, this is what you want. 240 Hertz, 1440p, well, 1600p, whatever. It's gonna be great. Okay, let's have a little look at the rest of the specs here. So for the RAM, we have 32 gigabytes of 5600 mega transfer per second DDR5. But what's most interesting is this says it's used slots two of four so it might be very simple to upgrade this to 64 gigabytes. That would be nice. We also have a one terabyte SSD, a second one terabyte SSD. So this is probably a very, very expensive config. Wi-Fi 6E, and of course the RTX 4090. And that 4090 goes up to 175 watts, which is as fast as NVIDIA will let you do it. You can cool it better, you can give it more power, but NVIDIA won't let you do more than 175 watts. Given how much space they are taking up, these speakers better be fantastic. So we have woofer and tweeter up top, and then two more woofers on the bottom. And how does it sound? Okay, so this is THX Spatial Audio Certified, and it is surrounding me quite well. You can kind of think of it like Dolby Atmos, but owned by Razer and worse. Okay. That is pretty good. It is quite loud. There isn't quite as much bass as I would like. 
And there also is a bit of distortion at the higher volumes. I am curious though, let's turn off THX spatial audio. It sounds about the same, but without the sort of cool making it sound larger than a laptop effect. Can I have your MacBook again? All right, razor blade, MacBook. MacBook's way better. It gets way deeper. It's just as loud. It has better treble. Okay, so it is better than a thin and light HP, but I think the HP also has better clarity. I don't wanna crap on it too hard because these are very good speakers for a laptop. It's like, I'd give it an A, but it isn't getting into the A plus territory and this is an A plus price and form factor. I've already said this a lot, but we're, we're gonna help someone out here. Just go to mouse settings, pointer options, enhance pointer precision, pretty please turn that off. That disables mouse acceleration and then you're able to just be a lot more accurate when you're playing games. I hope that helps someone. Well, fair play, Razer. 130 FPS, 140. We're sitting right around there in the number one benchmark, Valheim. It's the sort of thing where if you run it on enough laptops and desktops, it becomes a valid benchmark. It is starting to get a little bit loud, but the quality of the fan noise is quite good. So what you don't want to hear is like that classic Razer Blade 14, like Wee! This is much more like a whoosh. All right, I'll play a different game. It wasn't running quite as fast as I wanted in Doom. So we're here in Razer Synapse. Medium CPU, no, we want boost. All right, give me all those fans. It does seem like that turning on the boost mode did help us a fair bit. We are looking at what, 200? 230 FPS right now, which is a lot better than it was before, which is more like 160. I am guessing that is largely just because, well, this is probably very CPU limited, this kind of FPS is, and it was only running at like 2.5 or so before. Now it is much faster. Yeah, we're now at like four gigahertz. That is a big difference. It is also louder. I guess what you could say is it's gone from open back headphone friendly to unique closed backs. So kind of depending on where your head is, you might get more or less of that whine. Like, Andy, if I turn it like here, does it get better? No, I can't hear it at all. But if you turn it the other way, like put it down. Yeah. Then that sound comes back, comes back. And now the high pitch is there? Yeah. Yeah, so it seems like it's sort of, the high pitch sound is coming out, but not towards the user, which is good at least. Although I kind of hear it now. What I do have to say though, is this display is exceptional for gaming. Like we're getting 240 FPS in the game right now, and I can be so incredibly accurate with where I am looking at. This is the kind of display, like the size and the refresh rate, that makes you totally okay with like using this instead of a desktop. That said, I do want you to remember that this is not a desktop and it's not an actual 4090, it's the die from a 4080. All right, let's have a look at this webcam here. So this is a five megapixel camera, which means we can have 1440p recording and it looks fine. The hardest thing about doing a webcam is just the software that's involved. And this is doing a pretty fair job, actually. It's exposing for my face, I did click on it, so if it, yeah, this is a very, very rudimentary um, <laughs> focusing. You just kind of click on your face where you want it and it does that. But at the same time, it is exposing for my face and it's working pretty well in this very challenging scene. So, good job, Razer. It's not trash. As well as the webcam in the center, we also get Windows Hello facial recognition. Awesome way to enter your laptop. Love to see it. Thank you, Razer. You know a skin's ridiculous when the guy that personally requested a scorpion thinks it is extra. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. There we go, after removing a legion of T5 screws, we are in. And uh, we have our first very large disappointment, which is the not very large battery. 
This right here is 91.7 watt hours, which is pretty darn good, but the limit of how big you can get is 99.9 .9 watt hours. And given the weight and size of this laptop, that's what should be in here. Instead though, this is a three fan arrangement, two up here like you normally would have, and another one down by the battery, which makes me wonder uh, just how hot does this thing get while it's charging? <laughs> That said though, there are a bunch of other really good reasons why you might want a fan right here. Specifically, like it just creates airflow in the chassis over like your SSDs, your RAM, and everything else that isn't going to be taken care of by your big old vapor chamber. Speaking of which, there's a big old vapor chamber. <laughs> Look at the size of this guy. Now they aren't getting the maximum amount of finnage. So if we look back here, there's fins there and fins there, but that said the cooling on this is very good. So you're not really gonna be making it faster, just quieter. Now in here, instead of using liquid metal, like a lot of laptop brands, they are instead using graphite, which does not have the same kind of performance that liquid metal does. But at the same time, it has exceptional longevity. You can just stick graphite in something and leave it for, I don't know, 10, 15 years and it'll be fine. And you don't have to worry about it leaking out like liquid metal can do, which ruins everything. In task manager, it said it's using two of four RAM slots, but there's only two RAM slots, so they got that wrong. That said though, it is very nice to have super easy access to your RAM. It's right here and it's not like 32 gigabytes of 5,600 mega transfers per second RAM is bad. Does it fit in an LTT backpack? Oh, ho, ho. Wow. it does. Barely, like barely, barely, but it does go in. So it earns us a couple of points there. As a desktop replacement, this screen and this amount of power is very impressive. Now, don't love the keyboard, but everything else is very, very well done. As spec, this laptop is $5,000. <laughs> and it starts at three grand. At $5,000, I have a lot of trouble recommending this because I, I don't know, I don't really get desktop replacements. I understand that for some people, having the mobility is great, but if you have the space, you can buy an entire desktop and well, not, not this laptop, but you can buy a thin and light and have a very good time. That said though, if you have heaps of cash and no spot to put a desktop, the Blade 18 is pretty darn cool. So hit like, get subscribed, and maybe in the future we'll try and uh, have some slightly cheaper laptops, something you might actually wanna buy. Have a good day.